next thing we need to do to turn this from just something that listens on a port and says hello world into an API is start figuring out which resources people are requesting when they send a request to the API. In order to do that, we need to parse the URL that they are asking for. Let's go ahead and clear out our console. Um, in OSX, I just do command K and that erases everything. Luckily, Node has a nice helper library for all things related to URL functions, and that is called URL. So let's go ahead and require that. And we're assigning it to a variable called URL. Okay, so now we have the URL library available, and I'm going to just write some comments that lay out exactly what we're trying to do. The first is we want to get the URL and parse it. Then we want to get the path from that URL. Then we want to send the response. And then we want to log what path the person was asking for so that when a request comes in, when we look at the terminal, we can see, oh, a user just asked for, you know, slash users or slash admin or slash whatever. And for now, we're going to keep this response the same. We're still just going to say hello world back to the user. But these other three sections, logging the request path, getting that path, getting the URL and parsing it is what we need to fill in. And we're going to use the URL library for that. Okay, so I want to create a variable called parsed URL. And the value of that is going to be URL dot parse rec dot URL and then the second parameter is true. All right, what is that? What does that mean? This is where we need to start explaining what's coming back from this callback or in this callback. When we create the server and then tell it to listen, when a request comes in, both of these objects get filled out and sent to you know, the meat of this function here every single time the request comes in. So someone hits you know, localhost 3000, this function gets called. Someone hits localhost 3000 again, this function gets called again. And each time it does, this rec and this res are new. This request object and this response object are brand new every time. And the rec object, the request object, contains a whole bunch of information about what that user is asking for. In this case, the thing that we're narrowing down on is exactly which URL, full URL, you know, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000 slash whatever the user is actually asking for. Now, the second parameter is true because of a little bit of a complicated reason. When we say true, we are telling it to parse the query string, which means to set the parsed URL dot query value at the equivalent as if we had sent this data to the query string module. So really we're using two modules in once. We're using the URL module because it contains a whole bunch of functions, but we're actually passing this true to tell it to call the query string module itself. These two modules work together and URL can call query string in order to give you a URL object or a parsed URL object that is fully complete, including parsing the query string data, which will be useful for us uh, later on. But for now, we don't really need to worry about it. All we need to know is that once we do this, parsed URL is an object that contains a whole bunch of keys of parsed metadata about the request path or URL that came in. Now we want to get the actual path from this parsed URL object. So I'm gonna create a variable and call it path, and it is going to be defined as parsed URL dot path name, all lowercase. 
path name is a key that's set on this object and it is exactly what it sounds like it is the untrimmed path that the user requests so if the re user requested http colon slash slash localhost 3000 slash foo the path is just the foo part and the parsed url object would contain a whole bunch of other things about the host etc which we'll get into later but for now we just want the path and that's contained in the path name which is now assigned to this variable path Okay, as I mentioned a second ago, this is the untrimmed path, and we are going to want this path trimmed. So we are going to create another object called trimmed path, and we are going to do a simple string replace with a regex. And you can go ahead and try to copy this from the source code. It's a bit convoluted, as all regexes seem to be. And then the second parameter is just an empty string. What is this? This is basically just trimming off any extraneous slashes from the path. When the user sends a request, they might be sending it to localhost slash foo, or they might be sending it to localhost slash foo slash. Um, and so we basically just want to trim off the slashes from both sides so that this is a clean URL and we can understand what they're asking for. We're going to build our API like many people build websites where you know the page at slash foo renders the exact same thing as slash foo slash. Okay, now we're sending the response as normal, as I mentioned. And lastly, we want to go ahead and log out the path that the user is requesting. So we're going to say that the request is received on this path. Okay, so I just saved this file and I'm going to go ahead and try to run it again. Node index.js. The server is port listening on port 3000 now. I'm going to once again open up another tab in my terminal, do curl localhost 3000 slash foo. All right, I got the hello world response back. And if we look back in the other tab where we're actually running the node app, we can see request received on path foo. Now let's see that regex at work. Let's see if we did localhost 3000 slash foo slash, what would happen? It's gonna log out that you've requested the path foo because it's trimming slashes from both sides. What if we just do localhost 3000? It's going to say that you asked for a path of nothing, of an empty string. What if you just have localhost 3000 and then slash? It's going to say that, again, it's an empty string. So whether you have something in the path or not, it's going to take away the slashes. But one important caveat is it should not take away slashes that live in the middle of a string. So for example, if you're asking, you know, for a resource that's several directories up, like it is at localhost 3000 slash foo slash bar slash, oops, sorry. I did a request at 300, it's supposed to be at 3000. If we curl localhost 3000 foo slash bar slash, it's going to tell us that the user requested foo slash bar. So that middle slash is going to stay there whether or not we have that final slash on the end. So that is how we're getting the path from the user re request. And for now, we're just logging it out. We are obviously going to do things with it uh, momentarily. But before we do that, there are other things that we need to grab out of this incoming request so that we can process the request and return response to the user. For now, I'm just gonna kill this server, clean my terminal out, and we'll go on to the next lecture.